Hello, and thanks so much for checking out the Coin Stories podcast video page. I'm Natalie Brunel, and I'm talking to the leading voices in Bitcoin about their backstories, career paths, and their philosophy on BTC. This podcast does not provide financial advice. This episode was brought to you by Bitcoin Magazine and the Bitcoin Conference. Bitcoin 2022 in Miami next year is set to be the biggest Bitcoin conference yet, with amazing guest speakers, panels, musical events, and so many chances to orange pill all of your friends. Make sure to get your pass and you can get 10% off with my code COINSTORIES in the link in my description. I'm super excited to share my guest today is tech entrepreneur Roya Maboob. I actually got to conduct this interview in person at the Oslo Freedom Forum, which is the conference put on by the Human Rights Foundation. Thank you so much, Alex Gladstein, for this opportunity. Roya is amazing and she's one of Afghanistan's first female tech CEOs. Roya is the founder of Citadel Software and the Digital Citizen Fund. Fund, and she has committed herself to increasing women's tech literacy and providing educational and employment opportunities for girls in Afghanistan. She is doing so much to spread the word on Bitcoin in her home country, and she's still actively involved in the ongoing evacuations in Afghanistan. Roya's story is incredibly inspiring, and if you want to support her efforts, you can head to digitalcitizenfund.org. Here's Roya. Okay, so I read that you were born in Herat, Afghanistan. Is it, did I, am I pronouncing it correctly? I actually raised in Herat. I'm between Iran and Herat. Okay, so tell me a little bit about like your childhood, your upbringing. Where are you from, and what was your early life like? Because I know that you got you guys fled when the Soviets were in Afghanistan, right? Yes. Uh, well, I am one of the seven children, so my I am the in middle. And uh, three older than me. I have three older brother, older than me, and three younger than me than myself. And um, so my father was engineer, and he was agriculture engineers. And um, uh, when we were very young, we went uh, to Iran, and uh, we became as a refugee there. And my father actually was worked there, but um, we had a lot of challenging. You know, as a refugee, you don't have that much opportunities and. Uh, actually freedom uh, because uh, you know yeah, you're not the citizen of that country but uh, I learned that um, you know I feel that it's a, uh, uh, I am a guest of this house so I have to take whatever it's available for me and uh, at that time we were very thirsty for the knowledge and uh, every year uh, we had challenging because every time that we get to the schools um, the next year wasn't uh, like um, uh, reliable that they will allow us to go to the school or not. So I remember those days, but I also remember that we had um, opportunities to be there and be in a safer place. What did your parents do? Was it easy to live as a refugee in Iran? And you were also in pa- Pakistan too, right? You no, know, I actually was in Iran. Uh, the whole time? The whole time. Okay. I don't know, some people say that I was in Pakistan, but I have never been in Pakistan. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it was on. it's on one of your like biography pages. Yeah, I, I saw in the some of the intern in my yeah. biography. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I saw in one of the like uh, like articles that they wrote that I was in Pakistan. I said I don't I don't know where they got that. But oh, good. Yeah. So dispel that. Okay. So you only in Iran. So yes. yeah. What did your parents do there? So my pa- my father was working as an engineer. He was working, but also he had uh, teaching at at uh, touting at the uh, private university. Yeah. Wow. So my mom wasn't working at the time. Got it. And then. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, but then my brothers start to also working because, um, you know, cost of living mm-hmm. was expensive. Uh, but my brother actually went to Pakistan to bring like goods to Iran. So that's maybe that's the reason someone says that I was in Pakistan, but like, we were not like living there. So why did you come back to Afghanistan? And that happened in about 2003, right? Uh, yes. And um, before that, I have to mention 1996 when I was in Nimruz, Province, a smaller city um, in, the, in the south of Afghanistan. And uh, the time the Taliban took over our city, I, I still remember it. And the time I was very young and, uh, you know, when they come and they took over the city. And at that time, lots of things was uh, not um, available for women. So they couldn't go to the schools. They, the lots of restriction is happening to on the daily lives of the women, which just make it very difficult for us. That's why we left it. Um, um, I had actually a younger sister. We were eight 
we had a young sister that it was she was six months but um my father brothers were not at home at the time and then um she was sick and then my mom couldn't take her to hospital because they didn't allow her they didn't allow her bed out men she travel at the night to hospital and really uh, yeah and unfortunately um my mom uh, lost her uh, oh, no. uh, daughter or uh, my youngest sister and at that time, then she didn't want to stay in Afghanistan. Wow. We went to Iran, and uh, yeah, we had. Um, and at that time, I remember that I saw computers because it was a computer at the time, was a fancy things and only luxury things that uh, rich people could pay for that. But we heard about this kind of magic box that you can talking with people. But I was uh, lo- looking at the winter sometimes because I had a ID card of uh, you know refugee, so I couldn't really go and learn about computer. But I was a uh, looking at the books and things and learning about it. But in 2003, we are back because um, American was at the time in Afghanistan and um, the safety bags at the time and the schools were open and lots of opportunity was available. So I remember those days that we returned. At the beginning, I didn't really want to come back because that the memories of the past and mm-hmm. the, of Afghanistan. But then, of course, my family is kind of pushing because they wanted to back to their country. And then yeah. we back and um, I think that we were we back to Herat. And I the first night I got in love with Herat and the communities. And yeah. Um, Wait, so when you were younger and you were living in Iran, what did you want to be when you grew up? I, you know, at that time, I was being an engineer because my father was an engineer, okay. civil engineer. Yeah. We preferred more or became a doctor. So these are the two things that most of the mm-hmm. Middle Eastern or um, Afghans and even Iranian wants that their children become a doctor or engineers. And uh, when we returned back to Afghanistan um, uh, in 2003, there was a lot of opportunity available at the time. And, uh, you know, you could go to the classes, courses, all, you know, lots of money was at the time, you know, security was perfect. And uh, was that because of the U.S.? Uh, yeah, I mean, United States coming at the time and they brought a lot of opportunities as well at the time. And um, at the beginning was, I mean, perfect. We call it uh, the golden age of Afghanistan at the oh. time. And then, um, you know, and then uh, and I was here that the reason the cafe actually was open up. And then, um, and I heard about, I mean, I saw the computer before, but it was just uh, never attach it or never like use it. And then again, every, my brothers and my cousin could go to the same club and everybody's coming and talking about it. At that time it was Yahoo Messenger was uh-huh, some yeah. things that people like chatting and they Google and searching information. And for us it was very difficult because there was only one library in Harat. Mm. And if you want to t- find any information or like you have to use the old books. And mm-hmm. if you want the new books, you have to write the names of the book someone should go to Iran and you have to wait and months and weeks that person return back and bring that book for you. No way. Uh, yeah, it was very difficult accessing to information and updated books. I'm talking about 2003 and 2004. And then they talking about this small box that you can find any information. So I was so fascinated to to see it and I was insisting one day that I have to go there. And I um, then we could convince the the shopper that I allow us to get inside early morning, actually. And then it wasn't appropriate for the girls at the time uh, to be in the club. And even many boys didn't use that in, uh, internet at the time. And uh, But I was uh, I took that risk because I just wanted, I had, uh, I think that that was my first time that I test, uh, test my courage, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Say that I wanted to, do, to be there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the first moment when I was start to using computer and they show me that when you type and you find so many information, oh, you, there is boxes that you can talk with people and whether they care that what's your gender is, who you are. And was like all of the things about this technology was fascinated. And I decided that whatever has happened, this should be the next, uh, like be determined my, I determined that somehow technology be my next career or something's my life. That's so cool because even in the U.S., not many women go into computer science. It's still like all of the STEM fields are predominantly men. So I would imagine in other countries, it's the gender gap is even worse. So what did you, um, I mean, you studied obviously computer science, right, at university. And then what was your early career like? Uh, I started working as an IT coordinator at the Herat University. I was one of the um, uh, first female IT coordinator in 22 public universities. 
And I really enjoyed my work and um, how I got it. I was very early age, like 20 when I was become IT coordinator because I was very practical student. I wasn't like those students who all the time read and get the best uh, numbers. I was preferred that anything is as a project. I do it. So I build the websites for the university, for the faculties all the time. I go to the uh, university to, ch to see the chancellor and show my projects. I think that he liked it. And then he oh, asked wow. me to come and helping him with this position. Yeah. And I was a uh, all to do voluntary work and then later on he hired me. Okay. And I was the first, I mean also was one of the few female that at the time working yeah. with 400 other colleagues that were male and they didn't like it. But I was young, you know, I wasn't like really um follow the rules of how to dress and how to like, you know, mm -hmm. I was young and I was like uh, doing the things that I did, preferred and I wasn't really follower. I never was a good father anyway. <laughs> and <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was, um, uh, but that uh, project, that uh, jobs give me insight to biggest project, the big projects of NATO, USID, uh, German mm. projects that they implemented in the university as the, there in terms of the uh, building the networks or bringing the fiber optics or bigger projects. So that's give me when I was very young, give me insight of this, working with these projects, I learned a lot and my experience, yeah. So did you also focus a lot on like coding and development work yes i was also at the same time when i was ice coordinator we with a couple of other girls we created our own like kind of associations okay. that we're building the softwares and at the time we were only perfect because we wanted to you know there was a competition with the boys as well and mm -hmm. at the university and uh, we wanted to say now we can also create a con uh, like software and bring in the applications to the market mm -hmm. And then um, that was at the time at that time was uh, I was involved. And then uh, one day, uh, Paul Brantley, he was a uh, former um, deputy under secretary of defense. He came to uh, Herat at the time. They had a project called under the for, uh, task force for business of the operation. And they came and they came and visit university, Herat University. So we had a chance to meet with him and we talk about the technology. And he also was, uh, his background was, uh, he is a programmer as well. And he was uh, interested and he saw our projects and then he discussing that he wanted to build like this innovations, uh, like uh, technology incubators at the time. So we got very excited and then we started our company. That's oh, how yeah. I started my uh, the first company, and um, and uh, I decided to hire all the women because uh, mm -hmm. uh, we want. I mean, I wanted that uh, we as a woman have our own company of technology, and at the, and I hired a lot of the uh, either my my colleague uh, my my teammate uh, like classmates or the friends and then uh, other uh, women that either as a bloggers and programmers, and that's how I became the one of the first female tech CEO in Afghanistan. What makes women good at IT? What do they bring that men don't? I think that they bring uh, a different perspective, and women, I think that they are more in details. Mm -hmm. And um, so even we we had boys that are also working with uh, men that working with our company, but usually they are in only one things and then then they don't care about the rest and to thinking. Sorry, I'm not saying that all men are like that, yeah, but like at least... Yeah, like compartmentalized versus like... Yes, like yeah. And the women think about in uh -huh. general. And then usually, <laughs> or maybe it was for me, I don't make it generalized uh, that someone's get offended, but I mean, mm. uh, with the women that they work with us, they they always working on, uh, if, they, if there was any software or, uh, or application that they work, we think about everything because it's like mm. when you're cooking and then you're like yeah. doing things and you think about everything right <laughs> and how it's also bring the impact and then uh, but uh, was a bit different of course I mean say that we had also very good uh, technical uh, technical mm -hmm. that uh, 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 coders from men so they they did a great job as well but I saw that the women are more passionate about that and then it was give them more ability when they feel that this is something that they own it and they're writing and this is their way of the work and they can own it and the men cannot take it credit for right. that. So that was also another thing that the, our company grow fast. I, I have to give an example. One of the projects that we work for, it was from the US government gave us a contract that we have to, uh, working on Ministry of Defense, Ministry of Interior, and we look at the weaknesses and strengths of the project, big projects that they implement, we had to consult them. So we had the two groups. Of course, we, we, we hired senior engineers, well male, and then mostly young girls that are working with them. And then they didn't want to, because I was young and they're older than me and they didn't want that I will be their boss. And, oh. you know, and they all the time, like, not do what we wanted from them. And oh, two yeah. weeks for that before that we finished the project, um, 
they left the project and they didn't give us the like the projects that two months we work on that. I mean, they simply didn't give it and then they left it. And you know, oh, no. the contracts and like the court system was different at the time. So we had two weeks and then we decided don't hire again like senior men. So the how other word we bring in two other women uh, as the seniors. <laughs> and in two weeks we had a uh, time to uh, finish projects and actually they did a greater jobs. So they went and did a very good presentations and and generals oh, wow. and uh, Americans that who were at the time they really liked uh, the the advice that they gave to them. Well, so it, it wasn't the first company then that built the female blogs, right? Because you wanted to empower women to tell their stories. Which company was that? Uh, it was one of the projects that under the okay. Afghan Student Software. Um, um, so and then um, then we we get you know I was very involved with the social media at uh-huh. the time. I was also my thesis was about social media in 2012. Uh, I received a text in uh, LinkedIn that um, because of the there was a documentary about our company and a guy who was Italian American who never was at that, that region. He he contacted me and said, "Oh, I saw your documentary. I wanted to invest in your company if any projects that you are interested." And then that's how we come up with uh, some things that uh, women can work in Afghanistan, and it's not being the control of the governments or the the male uh, IT industry because many of the projects in Afghanistan was mostly contract based. Mm-hmm. You have to do the contract either for the uh, Afghan government or US government or for the NATO and um, it wasn't sustainable. It was a good uh, way that you can make a lot of money but mm-hmm. uh, and again, you are in control of others. Yeah. If they want to give you money, especially with having governments, which was uh, very corrupt at the time, they didn't want to give contracts first to you. And if they give the contracts, they make your life like a, so hard that, like how we say, that they don't pay you on time, but they want the jobs done. Um. And then when you put, uh, done the jobs, you have to give borrow money from others to, to no complete their contracts and you have to wait months and months to get your money. And it was, uh, they it make it very difficult, especially for women and especially for the startups that was uh, challenging. And then we hit- So even with the Taliban gone at that time, it's still kind of just in the sort of tradition that women don't play a big role in, in business or in finance at all? At that time, yes. I mean, the women, like I'm talking about 2010, 2009, mm-hmm. 2010, and 11, and, and, um, and also it, it's... It's a started the women to do businesses, but the wo- women businesses in technology construction mm-hmm. and the new businesses. This wasn't the new industries wasn't really uh, that much popular that women be yeah. because it was very male dominated. Sure. And then uh, women were mostly like handicraft and uh, culture maybe and maybe some fun. sometimes food were more like or fashions yeah. was uh, more popular at the time. But when you came says okay, I am I have a construction company and I'm engineer or you say I'm technologist and like. It wasn't really uh, welcoming by male industry. Not this, uh, you yeah. Know, society was also not ready for the change to, to see a woman, young woman, come and say, "Oh, I'm technologist. I can build the software. I can do the networking or procurement." It wasn't for them like right. Uh, it's as culture things. Not as a mm-hmm. law, but as a culture things. Um, but then, um, yeah. I mean, uh, then we we decided to building a platform that. Uh, be only for women and the women can share their thoughts uh, and their creative contents and ideas uh, and get paid b- based on the mm-hmm. uh, content. And they can be wherever online and they can be a bill. And we created a buzz scores to see that how much they are active in the social media and how they share it. And in fact, we give the vo- uh, women a voice that they can tell in the stories and their thought, even with the not real names, uh, different names or whatever they choose it. And, uh, but uh, we feel believe that this is give them a powerful tools mm-hmm. uh, to talk about the stuff, and which is a uh, uh, they have a voice uh, in a society, but also getting paid for the content that they created. And um, yeah, that was about the platform uh, Women and X. And um, what was it called? Women and X. Okay, got it. And at this time, you had heard of B- Bitcoin or not yet? Not yet. Okay. We started paying the uh, our bloggers, but then the numbers is grow. Uh-huh. And it's get very difficult to pay, like it wasn't only rot. We have to send money to Kabul, and Nimrus and to other problems. And promises. how would you send the money? You were wiring US dollars? Uh, sometimes through Afghan? the bank, sometimes we use the Havala system. Okay, interesting. And so we give them and then someone is getting and then distributed. And then we got the challenging because um, some of our users says they never received money. 
Oh. And then they say they didn't receive it, and then someone showed it, that they have a signature. They said this is not my signature. It's like a, always like a drama with that uh, oh, part. No. And then uh, there was not, I guess, say transparency. And then the other issues that many of them they didn't have a bank account. And then mm-hmm. a woman, uh, it's not like the law doesn't allow them to have a bank account, but it was because culturally. Uh, wasn't either appropriate for the women to have a bank account and then they needed f- like family's permission to have a bank account to open a bank account and uh, that's all like kind of challenging for them to have you know 80 uh, still today 85 percent of afghanistan's they don't you uh, they don't have bank account they they more believe on how a system wow. only people who at the time had bank account that either work for the governments or for the UN agencies or aid mm-hmm. agencies that they can receive their monies uh, or their salaries or soldiers at the time. So then it was difficult because banking was a issue. <coughs> the other issue that women who make the money, uh, the families take the money, some of them, like the brothers or, or husband or, or, or the fathers, and they really needed uh, didn't have the control of their own finance for their own creative content that they created and that was also was another issues that we had and uh, they couldn't invest or they couldn't save their monies because basically uh, their monies wasn't belong to them or were not belong to them and then we had uh, we decided to okay banking doesn't work beside okay let's go to mobile money and then mobile money wasn't uh, at the time also implemented in whole country but in some of the provinces they started work but also was kind of a little bit um, uh, cost costly you have to pay a little bit at the beginning and then someone who receive it also has to be charged and it's like all like, these kind of regulations that again make it difficult that we're using the mobile money and when uh, you say mobile money is that I mean what's M-Pesa the company or and, uh, what is it M-Pesa and at the time that oh, okay. using and then um, interesting there was another company I forgot I shouldn't like um, giving the uh, inaccurate uh, <laughs> uh, words but yeah I mean uh, there was a couple of companies it was one M-Pesa was and then another one I forgot the names but both people pay fees and it's yes challenging uh, challenging and then um I kind of like sometimes we with some of the students we only like send twenty dollar per week or thirty dollar in the weeks and then some uh, they have to pay a fees and which is make it difficult and it wasn't even implemented in the whole country so they make it another way that uh, challenging for us and then uh, we heard it about I mean uh, my business partner sent me an article about Bitcoin so like can you just look at this what is this and I was like okay and I wasn't at the beginning was like because it's not cash and we don't touch it because at the time you know it, it wasn't like United States or other countries you are here like PayPal Venmo I don't know using mm-hmm. credit cards and like this is I'm talking about the countries that all use cash mm-hmm. and none of this like um, yeah uh, if they don't uh, touch it they don't believe yeah, it that it's, it's not real. real yeah so that was uh, the problem and <laughs> then um, he explained me and then we read these articles and then we, we had challenges because the number was growing and it was very difficult to um, also hold the money when you take from the bank to go to the whole, sure. uh, to, to, com- uh, to to the company it was also difficult because uh, at the time was a lot of kidnapping happening and if they know that you have money sometimes they know that from maybe the people in the bank or whatever when you go from the bank out I always have to take it and my brothers or another my colleagues to go and get the monies and cash to distribute it it was difficult oh because gosh. we were afraid that either someone's take the monies or they know how much we have to money I mean how much were you taking out like it was a to- like sometimes five, a few thousand dollars five thousand ten thousand dollars in US dollars like US dollars and you have to distribute the money Wow, and as um, with all of these users, which just make it difficult. And what did you say in the panel that the average person in Afghanistan makes how much per year in U.S. dollars? Uh, I I have to say I like I shouldn't make it incorrect um, mm-hmm. uh, things, but at the time that I know the people, especially like with the teachers and uh-huh. which is uh, our uh, or the soldiers or the people who make the money, it's between one hundred fifty to two hundred dollars per month. Okay. Wow. And then I mean, wow. uh, like, uh, still with with that money, most of people living all of your lives. I mean, a family can live with that uh, amount of the money, and then um, and at the time, Bitcoin was about a hundred dollars, right? Yes. 
<laughs> I, 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 Bitcoin is over from a hundred dollars, but it was also increased uh, later oh, wow. on. And then, uh, then we decided to change, and because we are fast at time, I think we are. You're younger. You wanted to tr- trust. Trust. It's, it was about new technology. You want to take it. Yeah. And I, I uh, then we decided. No, yeah, this is something that's interesting, and it's like a golden, and it's something that you control it, and it's your own, and you have the ownership of some things that is belong to you, and no one can touch it, and no one ever knows how much you have it. Yeah. And I love it about that part because then you have control your own finance and and then we right away and i mean in, i think in a few weeks we implement bitcoins in hold our system and actually we so much believe on that we change whole of our business on that and all of our monies we put it in the bitcoins you cha- you made your whole treasury like your balance sheet was all bitcoin for your company yeah you we make it Michael Michael Saylor yeah. by a lot <laughs> <laughs> we believe it so much and then we change it, and uh, maybe it was a good idea, maybe it wasn't bad, bad, bad idea. But we changed business space on the bitcoins, and then, That's amazing. and of course, um, we then we teaching all of our colleagues that how to use the bitcoins and have a wallet. We we but in our platform, each one has their own wallets as well, so it make uh-huh. it much much easier that they are receiving the monies. But then uh, we also teaching them that how they can. Uh, save it in blockchain at that time we're using blockchain for wallets that uh, oh yeah so wait what wallet we're using a blockchain blockchain okay yes. interesting and that's um uh but for our own platform we had our own wallets we created oh so the uh, uh, um right away they could see that how much they were bitcoin they receive it in their own plat in our own amazing uh, we changed uh, our next platform based on the kind of it's kind of like a blockchain mm-hmm. uh, platform we created that they we have our own wallets uh, system inside of that that they could receive the money they could have that or they can just take it the monies and transfer it to another wallet at the oh, time wow. we changed whole system that's why we got so excited we started talking with the shops that because lots of uh, girls in Af- in Herat usually use these bitcoins and they didn't know what to do with this bitcoin we said okay wow because they like the b- buying shop and dresses sure. and we talk with those guys as well that if they receive the money and they bring the bitcoins so we can give you cash if you take the, their bitcoins and, and and my sister started to do this kind of like how all the things that oh my uh, make it cash and make money and then we teach the girls if they want to make it cash someday some of them selling cheaper the price of that to make it in cash if they want. Uh, and those who wanted to buy it in the cash, they could make it a little bit higher, even higher than the price of actual at the uh-huh. time. So this way also we teach them yeah, how, you guys to were trading. Tra- how to do trading, yeah. you know. And that's, um, it was a, a, a interesting uh, when we started, but of course, um, because it was something very new and people didn't believe it. Um, we got a lot of also blackish by mm-hmm. by male industry because they already didn't happy about the, the growth of my company and that I wasn't rely on any contracts and they didn't know how I even make money. They never did it, understand that because our platform was work on based on online advertising at the time. I mean, make money with advertising and they didn't get that concept at the time because wow. all was contract based and mm-hmm. and they didn't get that concept. And we also. Uh, invest full of our profits to build these IT centers instead of the public schools and teaching young girls to learn about technology and learn so about smart. Bitcoin. And they didn't get hold of the concept <laughs> yeah, why we are doing. And then um, they started to uh, characterize uh, my works and they all the time um, send in like a trades event to me that I have to stop like talking with the press and and then, um, and then they saw that, that they trying to find inf- figure out that how like to kind of sh- make me down. Then they find bitcoins that I paying my stuff in bitcoins and user, and then says this is a fraud. And they uh, and when you say these people, like who are these people? I have got mostly the my competitor, which they are part of the male. IT industries. Oh. I was one of a few female at the time mm-hmm. working, and my company was very fast grow. And yeah, uh, because we were not. I mean, we got some contracts, but we also not rely on the contracts. Mm-hmm. And then it's make it a little bit uh, difficult, I guess. And then they says it's a fraud, and I told them I didn't invent that anyway. <laughs> yeah, they just didn't I wish that, <laughs> I wish I was the inventor, but I wasn't. 
<laughs> I, I wish that too. <laughs> but um, but it was a new concept at the time, you know. Yeah. And uh, many people didn't get it, and then they says, mm-hmm. "Oh, this is kind of a new fraud that yeah. they bring it, and they don't want to give people the monies, and then they yeah. contact my my students, my my colleagues that this is a fraud. She's playing. She doesn't want to give your money. They giving they calling like this. So they're slandering you. <laughs> Lots of other things that they have done to me, but then yeah, I mean that was a. Uh, uh, issue and then um, in 2000, I think end of 2013 and uh, earlier 2014, the price crashed. Was done, crashed and and that was the time that they started to say that this is a proof and I have to <sighs> buy my repetitions and then for those who have kept their bitcoins, we we tried to, whatever cash was remind from myself that to pay them to. Yeah, so basically, I remember in the panel, they said that you you gave them sort of an option. They could keep their Bitcoin, but you promised to make them whole. So you would actually pay and make up the difference for yes. everything that they lost. And where did you take that? Just out of your own yes. like profits? Yes. Your revenue? Yeah. Wow. Why did you want to do that? Well, when you're working in a society that um, you kind of like in a conservative society, whatever you do, you blame for that and you will be... Um, uh, men's always push you back and always uh, finding ways to take you down. And I didn't want to give them that space. I mean, my repetition was more important than the profit and money. I could make wow. it. I was young and I was sure that I can make money in future as well. But my repetition was more important than that. Give them that wow. chance that they they characterize me for my business. I mean, we did. We decided to change the business and we decided to invest on bitcoins and. Um, we did it, and now we have to take the responsibility for that. And we teach also the, uh, our staffs. And uh, the, but you know, it was a choice for them. They keep the bitcoins, uh, or they they can sell it. And and uh, but yeah, I mean, my sister actually took many of those bitcoins at the time, and then um, and then later on she could pay for her college degree. So it wasn't too bad. So you, you know. like bought back the bitcoin basically. Yes. And did a lot of people sell, or were there some some employees that you had that still believed in it and wanted to keep it? Some of them actually kept it. Wow. Some of them kept it, and then uh, and uh, later on they could make money with that. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, so. I just was curious in terms of like resources when you were first learning about Bitcoin, um, how did you learn about it? Like, what are things that really stood out to you where you were like, "Oh, I really believe in this. I'm I'm down the rabbit hole and I have conviction for it." Well, I mean, at our times there was not too much like information and like courses, classes that re- you today you can mm-hmm. find it out. But I think Google is always was the best. You yeah. Google and you find it, the articles and mostly we went to through the articles. There was some classes I forgot the classes that online classes that you learn how to at least make the wallets and how to secure it and how to do trade. And, and um, so that was I mean we use it and then we actually we. We several like articles and these classes, and then we take those content and make it our own content and mm-hmm. created the uh, Indari and Pashto that we giving the students that they can learn about it. Uh, but our planning was is that uh, at that time, because you know how all the system for uh, eight centuries it was always men, uh, mostly men. Still, it is men industry, and our time we thought that oh, because it's like a twenty first century like. Uh, blockchain yeah. technology and bitcoins and we have to teach all of these women how to trade and do the mining and then we take this over <laughs> yeah. but it didn't work out but we pro- provide the training yeah wow okay so what happened after that because obviously the price recovered and your business kept going um i mean what was the next step for you um so I mean, uh, after that lots of things has been changed i left afghanistan i came to united states yeah uh, why did you leave uh, my life was get very difficult, as I mentioned. The business, um, as much you get fame, and it's also you, you your face get recognized, and uh, of course, lots of people probably love you and likes you and they admire you. And there are also groups who don't like you and yeah. they don't want that the changes happen because they are not ready for the change. Right. And uh, they send threads and you know. They follow me. They put in a spy in my company, and make really? it very difficult. That uh, at a point that I didn't feel safe, and I left Afghanistan. You and felt that, like your life was in danger. Yes. I mean, was there something that happened that was really scary that you could share as like a an example of a story? Uh, well, I mean, lots of things was at the time, and 
I know it that they're group, very powerful groups uh, in uh, in IT industry. Actually, they they don't like didn't like me, and they wow. are trying to do anything that to take me down. And uh, beside of them, there was conservative groups as well. I remember one time we I argued with one of them that um, they asked me to 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 stop all of this kind of presses and like promote because we have our job was like a media online company and we have to write and that's what we we were and they didn't get it and then. And they didn't want that we do it. And, and I said that this is none of your business. I don't think that I should follow what they ask. And they were, for them was a kind of like a new because most of the new companies usually follow what they say. And mm-hmm. then, uh, and I didn't. And um, I think that was like, I was different, I guess, at the time. Yeah. And you know, you're younger, you're like uh, more uh, yeah. passionate and Yeah, more, you're braver, more, you're almost more brave because you're just like <laughs> naive in it all, yeah. And then, um, so I didn't listen to them and then they told me that to put your repetition like down is easy because um, just it's, it's easy that we questioning you why you take these monies and why you give back it to the community. It's just a way that if that was enough because they are smart. They I suggest if I say that, and then the community because they are not enough educated to know how it's worth right. the system, they they can make a lot of like rumors about me and why we spend the money to build like build these IT centers and teaching the girls, and um, that was enough. I mean, uh, our office uh, attacked and they broke in and they, our windows and they sent threats and I was in a rot and one time they wants to arrest and actually there's my brother and instead of me wow. and then um, and then um, and then then we went there was nothing and then they always make it uh, the lives to make it more difficult it wasn't only me I think that many of other young women that they start the businesses they make it the situation in a way that you don't feel comfortable anymore right. you don't feel safe and uh, they want you to leave that they leave or they will make you <laughs> to leave and then I anyway I was left at uh, this is the, what they wanted and then uh, I just feel that uh, this failure wasn't really pleasant mm-hmm. and this is what they wanted and I didn't want that to give them that pleasure so I but I thought that if uh, we um, if I go back again and when I, I had my business but I was like thinking that if you be one or two or three it's easy to be targeted by different groups in conservative mm-hmm. society but they, what about if you built hundred thousand and hundred thousands of like yourself or better than yourself to do, do, do similar type of the job make it normalized in the society because in any society when you want it to be the first or two they don't accept it mm-hmm. and then they push you back yeah and then what about to build an army of females that are engineers and technologists that's amazing i love it well just out of curiosity at this point obviously you're successful you're one of the probably only female CEOs, right? And being the CEO of a tech company in the US, that means you're like, you're making so much money. You're like, it's not even funny. You're making bonuses and all that. Is it the same in Afghanistan? Like, were you, did you feel like at that moment, wow, like I've made it. I don't have to worry about money. I can like buy my nice house that I want. Is it, was it the same as here? I mean, I was uh, not only one, only CEO because uh, there are other CEOs as well, but I was a, Maybe I have called myself the, one of the few female tech CEOs at the uh-huh. time. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, we make money. I mean, that's uh, that's part of the yeah. uh, the things. And I was uh, happy, you know, I was traveling and taking my families out. And uh, But uh, but uh, my idea was also to giving back to the society. So I almost spend most of my profits to build this IT centers. I love that because um, mo- most CEOs here don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I feel because I was responsible and I feel that um, I had the opportunity to learn about this technology and computer in a, in a course that UNDP provide for mm-hmm. us free, and then um, and I went to university free. So it's uh, it's my job also to giving back to my community. I love that. And I think that I learned this uh, when in 2009 we came to United States the first time. You know, I learned volunteerism uh, to work voluntary here. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something in Afghanistan. Mm. And I hear, I saw that how like this uh, to work for others and helping others and communities. It was, I mean, I was fascinated with this concept in the United States. When I back, reaching back, I always tell that, oh, we have to, as a, as a responsible citizen, we have to give him, to do something. Oh, for our wow, community. that's cool. And I think that um, the only way that I could contribute it probably at the time was that 
giving the money and building this and our ideology that uh, idea was that yeah. to build this you know technologies female engineers and tech entrepreneur yeah i love that okay wait so how did you actually leave afghanistan and where did you go was that a hard time i mean i was going back and forth between us and new york at the time because okay. my brother was uh, my uh, former business partner was also in, uh, in uh, living in new uh, he was lived in new york and uh, we worked together so but then uh, we uh, i applied for a work visa Mm -hmm. And then a time I got my work visa, but it was only one entry, so I had to leave the country. And then I came here, but uh, we had to close the business and many of other things. It's uh, not only because of the crashes and the and 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 the Bitcoin, but also a couple of other reasons that I don't see that necessary to share here. But then, uh, then I just uh, decided to more focus on foundations because at uh, it was a. Uh, it's, it's something that you can bring more impact at the, in my thought mm -hmm. that can bring more impact okay and I was uh, decided to more focusing on that and uh, and I'm 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 glad that I did made that decision and so you basically kind of had to start from scratch though yeah and did you know a lot of people in New York other than your business partner did you bring your family like what was that time in your life like uh, it was very difficult because I was uh, I was here. My brother was lived in New York before, but his um, area was totally different than my mm -hmm. my area. My sister joined me, and then, um, but my parents and my friends, my yeah. colleagues, mostly were in Afghanistan. And then um, I, I was very also touched with my culture, mm -hmm. and I was missing my country, and then yeah. my missing my people. You know, at the time when you are a CEO, you have everything in your country. You have respect. You know, you have. You enjoy it, you know, the life there, but then you came to a different country and right. lots of things is not. But I made friends and I find colleagues here and uh, networking, you know. I, I think that I'm sometimes fast to build f friends mm -hmm. and uh, making friends. So, yeah, I mean, I get the c communities of two people who are also had a passion to help and support uh, the same cause. And I'm glad. And you kept working in Bitcoin or did you put it away for a time? Because, you know, the, for a long time, the Bitcoin the price mm -hmm. was done and it was yeah. lots of skeptical about this. And, yeah. But we didn't, I didn't, I lost the trust. I was always thinking that you something. Didn't sell yours, you I, I We it. had to because sometimes we needed like, you know, paying many of like bills. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. I, have to I keep some. So, I keep that, but some we sold it, and then my sister went to university, and she has to pay for that. And then because I was focusing on the foundations, and my time was voluntary, and mm -hmm. I didn't get paid by foundations, so I had to have my own revenue. So that was some of the bitcoins that I had. Got it. And then, um, but then um, with the foundations, the works that we have done, I'm really happy and glad. And then we keep the bitcoins as an education tools. And as education things, because I thought that if you provide this education early age for the young girls and then when boys, they learn about this concept. Mm -hmm. Later on, it could be a, a, when everybody uses bitcoins. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, we get the point that we want. So that was uh, the idea that put education first. And at that time, um, I mean, what year is this? Because you you probably already saw the U.S. situation in Afghanistan deteriorating because you weren't really surprised when the recent situation happened. Taliban was able to take over in, what, a day? I mean, the city fell in a day. Did you, Do you feel like you, you saw that coming? I, I didn't saw that uh, Taliban took over in the country in overnight. I thought that they will come and they will be part of the governments. And uh, the idea was that they share the governments. And then we we thought that there are lots of like um, uh, compromises that could be happen. And uh, but you know, I have to mention that uh, during the last twenty years, uh, Afghanistan had a lot of achievement, which unfortunately the media is not covering it. Uh, we had millions of the children go to the school. Mostly, also we had uh, that uh, large percentage as well of girls that went to the schools. I think that from nine million point uh, half, that was around like between three million and six were were girls, which is amazing in comparing yeah. with two thousand one. We had a lot of females as a decision makers, as a ministers, as a advisor to president. And, and they were part of the uh, as a part of the parliament and senators and, and a lot of women as a part of the media and a spokesperson for others. I mean, we had a lot of like uh, created a lot of role models of female as a, in the leadership positions. And, uh, you know, and then we had in terms of the economy, also, we had a lot of progress and human rights, freedom of speech and uh, women rights and 
And, you know, uh, we had 27 million young population of our country, which they live under 25. They are all grew up in an era of democratic with the cell phones and with the access yeah. to information. And uh, so what happened? Overnight, everything's changed. How? This is a question that we probably um, read all the story behind of that later on in the books, uh, mm-hmm. history books. But uh, 20 years of era of democratic is end in Afghanistan. And that chapter is closed and we're going to have a new chapter. Is it sad? Yes, we are all sad. We are all shocked and uh, we are happy. No, no one is happy with what's happening. Uh, who we have to blame? I think the loss of reasons that is a blame is the uh, United States who made a deal with Taliban and then um, uh, our former governments and leaderships that they were weak and corrupted and they, um, they were disconnected with the reality uh, in the ground, uh, which is make it also uh, make it that fast that to collapse mm-hmm. the, the government and then and many others. I mean, and, and as well, you know, um, what happened in Afghanistan, it's happened in the under the eyes of all of these political leaders around the world. So they were just watching what's happened and they did nothing. And uh, um, so but one thing that I found out uh, during this like six, seven weeks that we are working on evacuate people and yeah. students that we're working with them is not that uh, United States or the governments or other governments to help. It's about people. Yeah. The people. There's individuals that are there that yes. are really helpful. The Americans yes. that are there helping. American armies or the, mm-hmm. the uh, before the army, the people who worked and then um, the... Uh, I mean, investors who uh, um, get in the charter plane, and these people come. Yeah, it's about the people. I think that yeah, uh, they just didn't want to follow what the, the, the leader says, and political leaders do it, and political leaders get silent. They just watch it, and they blaming each, each other like always they do, and then they're yes. sitting, and then they do nothing, and then it was actually people who come yeah. to support us. It's just a bridge between people to save other people, and that was a beauty that I feel it, and yeah. uh, I appreciated everyone who have been uh, during this uh, like six seven weeks that they helped, and I know that's lots of people that I didn't know them, and they we just connected, and mm-hmm. they like. Uh, you know, they only sleep like three hours or two hours at the night and all the time working, filling these forms. Yeah. And uh, the passion that they give us, that uh, they give us hope. Yeah. Uh, well, I know you're still working to get people out. You just evacuated people recently, right? Like this week? Yesterday. Yesterday. I mean, how hard is that right now to evacuate people with right the now, Taliban taking control? Uh, uh, right now, things get a little bit more difficult. Uh, after 31st of August, um, basically that uh, get more difficult is a, is a law also from the State Department and as well from Taliban that Afghan national who want to leave, they have to have proper documentation. Yeah. And then it's a, the biggest challenge that the moment that many of them, they don't have a passport and then, uh, and it's make it challenging that they leave the country. And and, uh, and unfortunately, there are lots of these uh, people who are contractor for the U.S. government or for the NATO. They are the, like translator or the people who work as a P1, P2 applications. And unfortunately, if the husband has, the wife doesn't have, if wife, husband have passport, then children don't have. So it's going to make it very difficult to evacuate wow. or uh, they can leave the country. Yeah. And then, of course, Taliban also make it more difficult that uh, someone can leave. Well, and I saw the images of like people standing outside in lines at the banks and they can't get money. And Bitcoin kind of helps fix some of those issues with the bank runs and just being able to transact out of the purview of any government or the Taliban. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it can really empower people there, especially now? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, during the last uh, six, seven weeks, unfortunately, the banking system was collapsed. And- and they didn't have uh, cash and for for like a couple of weeks they were closed and uh, you couldn't get any cash at the time and the other issues was that uh, Western Union you know the bank went closed and Western Union doesn't work but when they opened the bank Western Union also was for a while closed but they recently allowed that uh, to transaction of the money but then there is a huge line of the people mm-hmm. and they have a limitation as well so you can't get because there is uh, not enough cash yep. every mind. And then um, the only thing many of the people get, uh, they don't have foods to eat. They don't have money to pay for their grants. So uh, like all of these challenges is happening at the same time you, do, you needed to pay for evacuation, which is security and all of the tickets and everything. So like it's making it very difficult. But that's why the beauty of Bitcoin doesn't need that any like, you know, permission of any governments or any, um, any middleman. 
So right now, even with us, uh, I think that we send money with bitcoins, and uh, not only us. I think that many uh, families that receive money currently is is about the bitcoins and the aid organization. Uh, also, some of them use the bitcoins to send them uh, money immediately. Uh, to someone's. Do you have any idea what percentage of people in Afghanistan use or how many millions of people use Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a new concept. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we taught a lot of our students, female students, to learn about uh, Bitcoins. But um, before that, uh, Afghanistan clubs, uh, Afghan young generation, usually the tech to, uh, that they are young and they use the tech, they started to actually for trading Bitcoins. And I think that Afghanistan became one of the 20 countries in, in the next of the China, I guess, um, which is get popular, Bitcoins mm -hmm. and trading and this stuff. And during the six weeks was a way that they can use it. There is not enough like uh, accurate data that we can say that how many, mm -hmm. but uh, the numbers is increasing day by day. And then um, it's a one way that they can Amazing. not only for transferring the money, but also for yeah. making money with trading. Well, I even saw when the president fled on that helicopter and they were trying to bring all the gold, like, right, all the gold bars and they left some behind. And it's like, oh, all of that could have been on a hard drive in Bitcoin, right? Yes. I mean, it's really transformative. Um, we tried to sell to the Afghan governments to yeah. know about that Bitcoins and use it, but they were a little bit slow, former governments, to implement the blockchain and, you know, wow. cryptocurrency. Yeah, he could have saved a lot of time. Um, yes. Well, what do you want to see happen? Like if you were a political leader and you get to, I don't know, make some sort of action happen with regards to the U.S. and Afghanistan or just in your country, what do you want to see happen or what would you do? I mean, it's a, for Afghanistan, the situation that currently have is not an easy recipe that we're giving and mm -hmm. it's happened. But uh, one thing that I know that what we are going to do is that what we are not going to give up on the millions of the children that left in Afghanistan. And we wanted to use the... Um, um, yeah, talking with the political leaders in the world, but also with the Muslim uh, community as well, that we can push the idea that the women should have access to the education, should have the access to justice, to health, and also the right to work. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is a uh, one of the things that, is, as I mentioned, it's a new chapter for us, it's a new fight as well. It would be after this, I will focus on advocating on that. Plus that we're going to build our first Islamic school, which is going to focus on blockchain, AI, robotics, which all women could have uh, get on that institute and still I have that idea that I love women that. should uh, lead the technologies in Afghanistan innovation park and especially in the Hawala system we have 21st centuries of women who work and trading yeah. and I think that's right now they can do it more because they are at the home and they can use the uh, internet connections yeah. and once they have the access to cell phones and yeah. internet it's easy they can just need to have some training yeah uh, to do that yeah and well under the Taliban control women are going to lose a lot of their rights, right? Are, yes. you, are you essentially stepping back in time? It's already a stepping back in the time. A lot of the achievement that we have done it, but that right now is everything has changed. Still, there's a discussion that the girls from 6th grade to 12th grade, this is that right now they can allow them to go, but we are hope that we can push it and we, we can get wow. that right. So, so you guys are going to essentially like lobby the, the Taliban, we have to do it. Yeah. I mean, there is, I mean, they right now they are in charge and uh, even we not uh, in the same, we are totally different people with different values. And uh, yeah, but one thing is I know that if Taliban for 20 years fight for their ideology, why we don't know? Mm -hmm. And acceptance and conscience has never changed the world. If we do not have a courage to change, uh, to f have a different view and different dreams for the women and children, nothing will be ever changed. That's I only know. I know this is going to be challenging, but we're going to push it and uh, it's going to be difficult and it's going to be challenging. But it doesn't mean that we're going to give up. If they fight for 20 years, I'm going to fight for another 40 years until I, I don't know how, how long I will be. <laughs> I love that. No, and I hope Bitcoin will help you empower the people there as well. And I think it's important to get the message out, I mean, to everyone, obviously, especially like even in our country, the general public, I think, is so uneducated about finances, how our economic system really works things like Bitcoin. Um, there's obviously a, a gender gap. I mean, there aren't a lot of women. We're, we're at a conference, right? Yes. This is my second Bitcoin conference. There's like, you know, five women in a room, a hundred guys. What'll change that? I think that's, um, I, I, this is, that's what we wanted to change our country. <laughs> I think that education is the first thing. Yeah. When it's a happen when you put the education early age for the girls and mm -hmm. women and make it all that they own it. They feel it that this is what they, if they are, 
a good coders and you can encourage them and show them role models that there are there are many women in terms of in the leadership we have less female uh, role models in tech yeah and even also in, the, uh, in blockchain and i think cryptocurrency we have right now more women get involved which is mm-hmm. good and it's going to be a role model because the kids when they grow up they will yep. look at the role models yeah and um, that's what we i think that education is a uh, is uh, important because it's an engine for regional development. And uh, we have to make sure that the women have that access to opportunities and education so that they can show they are talented and uh, they will have the support Mm -hmm. to continue. I agree. Does the Taliban use Bitcoin? Do you know? Probably some of them use for the transfer of the money. I don't know. I have uh, I can make comments, but I think that uh, uh, we are hope that uh, this governments or whoever is coming mm-hmm. next, they are not uh, stop it. And I think that mm-hmm. um, still, unless uh, uh, until we have access to internet connections, yeah. electricity, and the cell phones, I think that it still is possible that we provide this academy of the Bitcoin training. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that women can uh, get a lot of benefit of the, uh, out of that. And we are working on new projects for them, maybe similar project like Women X, uh, but in different way that the women can work from home and get paid in Bitcoins. I love it. Well, just to start to wrap up, um, for the people out there that are very new to Bitcoin and maybe they know your story or they're inspired or they're from Afghanistan or they want to help in some way, I mean, how do you explain the technology of Bitcoin in a way that's really simple where obviously you could go down a rabbit hole of learning <laughs> So much about it. There's so many interesting aspects of it. But like, how do you explain it to the average person who maybe doesn't have a huge education in finance or even, you know, science? Well, I, I don't know about uh, others, but I mean, in Afghanistan, how we explain is that uh, bitcoins uh, is like a digital gold. And then um, it was very simple when you're t- talking about how all the system that you can say, is, okay, this is the 21st century and this is just a technology that you can keep the Bitcoin and Bitcoin is give you the freedom. Freedoms that you can be owner of your own money. You can save it, you can trade it, you can invest it or you can um, just do whatever you want with that. And there is no one who have control or knows how much money you have and or want to take it from you. There is no anybody unless yourself that you have the password. Hopefully, you don't give your password to others <laughs> <laughs> to have access to your accounts. And uh, um, that's about the Bitcoins. And uh, especially for, I think, that developing countries and the countries that they have uh, dictatorship uh, governments. And because, you know, what happened in Afghanistan, it's just simple as that. Last six weeks, I know a lot of my friends that they were very wealthy. They left Afghanistan only with one bag. They couldn't take any of their houses with themselves, right. not cars, not jewelries, even it nothing because they needed to have a, like one yeah. small bag to leave and evacuate because it, it was no any time. And right so now true. the Taliban uh, closed all of their personal bank account and they cannot have access to that, uh, especially those who work for the government. And they can't have access to the, even their personal account. They can't. They lost everything. My mom's left Afghanistan. I told her like three months ago, I was encouraging her to give her monies that we invest on Bitcoins. She was going to say, no, I, I, because she's also, you know, cash, physical. Yeah. physical. And, and now she's regretted because she left Afghanistan. Yeah. We evac- evacuated her, but she left also with one bag nothing wow. she could take it and like my mom lots of my other friends that they work for the government as i mentioned they are talking that they lo- they had farms they have lots of money in their banks and now they are regretted yeah <laughs> that's why they didn't listen but you were able to get your whole family out everyone's safe uh, my family is out but uh, still hundreds of my staff uh, their family members oh. and um, students that they are looking for safety they wow. are Still in Afghanistan, waiting for evacuation, but or fine. I shouldn't use the word of evacuation for a safe yeah. passage, so that they can go to somewhere else. But um, but there are still thousands and millions that they cannot leave Afghanistan. We cannot give up on them. How can people help? Um, I mean, we have a foundations, and uh, um, we are looking to raise the fund uh, that we can be able to build this platform that allows women to work from home and receive the bitcoins, and that they can send bitcoins, cryptocurrency to us, or like even if they have, uh, they are talented and they wanted to voluntary work and help us with the uh, technical um, backgrounds or coding, we would love to have those people who support. 
Burgos. I love it. Okay, well, I'll include the links in all of this, you know, the descriptions of these episodes so that people can come and they can help you and support you. We want to support you in any way possible. Um, <laughs> just you. to kind of wrap up, uh, last question. I like to always end with sort of a reflection of looking back. Like if you could have a conversation with your younger self, like maybe before you started your companies and ventured into this whole world, um, what would you tell yourself? Uh, it's an interesting question. I don't know. I mean, I would probably say that to myself that because I'm an impatient person, to have more patient and you know sometimes I'm stubborn for stuff that <laughs> I want to do it I might you know and I did a business back into the, the the past maybe I was using different ways of dialogue to making sure things happen and to pursue the people that they can more follow but one of the things that I might regret it is that why I have done less for Bitcoin communities in Afghanistan and yes I mean we our business kind of like collapsed but we could keep continue somehow, and uh, I had to more push about uh, the the concept of Bitcoin. So not only for Herat community, but actually mm-hmm. in whole the country. And uh, today, maybe more people could get benefit of that. I feel that I have that guilty that was uh, we had that time and opportunity. Why I didn't do more, and uh, why I didn't push more. I mean, I did, but I I could do more, and more people could get today uh, involved with bitcoins but doesn't mean that i'm not gonna do it and i think that uh, uh, we can still keep continue but uh, uh, yeah these are some of the regrets that i might have no you've done so much work you're being hard (laughs) on yourself you've done so much thank you so much for for being on this i really appreciate it thank you for having me here